please, someone. I just, I just need some some Halo content, some split screen story. <laughs> uh, hey, isn't that the guy who was running the AA meeting? Season, oh, this is campaign. It's so sad. Looks like he relapsed again. Well, don't say that. It might actually add campaign split screen soon, right? <laughs> we should go. Hey, kid. Got something for you. Oh, more campaign story? Oh, infection. I like infection. Is that... is that it? Is that it? Halo Infinite. It is time once again to revisit one of my favorite franchises literally ever. The reason I wake up in the morning and the reason I cry at night. This series right here was peak gaming, okay? I will always come back to see what the latest is with my boy Master Cheeks. If you're wondering why I didn't cover this sooner, well that's because I was waiting for the beta to be over. Like usual, season four launched pretty messy. Ranking didn't work. Broken. Big Team Battle started with rockets for some reason. Broken. The store prices were messed up. Broken. Not even all the content was fully added, since they added one more arena map post-season launch. What? The parts that weren't broken? Now that's just some spicy meat sauce. Now that the dust has settled, I wanted to give my honest thoughts on the season. The good, the bad, and the whatever the hell this is. Krakatoa! I also really want to talk about the future of Halo and what comes next, because honestly, there might actually be a glimmer of hope. Quick editor's note, per usual, trying to make a Halo video is hard, because things change with this franchise literally by the day, so I've had to make a few changes. 343 recently added Squad Battle. Ah, it's beautiful. An 8v8 playlist on Halo 3 BTB maps, and it fucking rules. Look at these, hold up. What yeah, this the is fuck? Forge? These look like... Are these sandbags that he put textures on? I think they yeah. are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Those look so Fire, cool. Bro. Yeah, I'm nah, impressed. Forge, forgers are literally Arr. a different breed. But we'll save that for later. Good stuff first, per usual. Infection is finally here, bro. Oh my god. It took us 20 months to get there, but we are finally here. And... I mean, it's pretty fun. Oh, I'm in there. Oh, I am in there, dude. Oh, let's go! Fat triple. The concept of Halo Infection has always been fun. It's kind of hard to really fumble. You got your survivors, Spartans on their last legs, with what feels like 10 bullets to your name, versus the infected. The mode feels very unique in Halo Infinite, for better and for worse. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I panicked. If you don't know, the Monkey Faction finally evolved from the Stone Age and developed their own AI, Eratus. The mighty Eratus! I will put him a gun! He infects a Spartan, which eventually leads to an outbreak. I just described to you the last 20 months of the story in two sentences. The aesthetic with the whole Eratus, I hate the way that's pronounced, but I prefer Eratus. I don't know if that's just me, but whatever. I'll keep on saying Eratus. The aesthetic with the whole Eratus takeover thing is actually pretty cool. I think the designs look badass and are very well done. Bravo. There's some controversy over infection not being flood related, and honestly, I don't really give a shit. Peak Halo infection was always just a Spartan with a sword. And it's still slapped, alright? So personally, I don't get the big deal. Halo 4 tried doing a flood thing and it just looks like not a flood thing. Colgate Optic White O2. I will say one thing about the presentation though. Last of your kind. Last of your kind. This is fucking hilarious. Albeit, kinda cringe. I don't know why they gave my mans a stutter, all right? Why not just add some cool glitchy effect or something? It's pretty goofy. The gameplay of Infinite Infection is actually really fun. As a survivor, you're forced to find ammo and supplies immediately, as opposed to just hiding like a little ungoy bitch. I love the breakable barriers too. Big COD Zombies vibes. I will say, I'm baffled that there aren't any forge maps in matchmaking for infection. The mode is cool and all, but a lot of the vanilla maps just 
don't feel good for this mode. Like, they suffice, I guess. I played some Infection on some Community <laughs> Forge maps with my Discord server. Who's rush drives and rides <laughs> through the And the experience was that good ol' Halo magic you know and love. This is like surprisingly well made. This looks nice. Yeah, whatever. Oh, jeez! Oh, really? yeah, oh. Did you just run right <laughs> past me? Can I do that again? Yeah, for stopping me from... I'm going to ban <laughs> Rock. <laughs> Don't go that way, there's plenty of infected. This is just a simulation oh, of your God. fans in real life trying to chase you at PAX or something. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is oh, Caster and the other admins trying to get the Pete Tech oh. kills. Come here! Come here! Oh. You're mine! Come here! Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Must end up in Jump video. Scared. Bro, look at you all down he there, holy shit. Get plugged. Get no! Also, they decided to limit the last man standing timer to 30 seconds. Now look, on one hand, I can see why they did it. It keeps the rounds moving forward and prevents that sweat lord from farming points for two minutes straight. On the other hand, I love farming points for two minutes straight. <laughs> I'm so screwed. No, not the shield. What's up? I have to reload at some point. No. <laughs> I gotta reload! Oh! Oh my god! Also, as far as I know, you can't even turn off the timer in custom games. What the fuck? Please fix? Anyways. What really matters is the abilities of the infected. Adding a whole new layer. The alpha infected start with active camo. Say ooh! And the shroud screen. I thought the shroud screen was meh. It had its uses. Monkeys. What are you aiming at? Here, however, it's one of the most terrifying things ever. Oh, there's a guy coming up. Oh crap. Oh, what? Where is he? Oh my god. <laughs> no, get away. Get away. Oh, dude, this is so stressful. Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, oh my god. Ah. It's crazy how useful a piece of equipment is depending on the mode. That's the Halo beauty you love to see. Overall, the infection experience is exactly what you'd expect. It feels odd that we live in an era where the entire marketing for a brand new season is just a side mode that launched with a Halo game. Speaking of equipment though, let's talk about the two new pieces. Introducing the Quantum Translocator. A piece of equipment that lets you create a ball of light that you can teleport back to whenever. Like this example. Now a lot of people were saying that this is literally just Tracer's ability from Overwatch. And my answer to that is yes. But actually, no. The main thing a lot of people don't realize is that when you first teleport back, it then creates another ball of light from the spot you teleported away from. You can essentially ping pong back and forth between dynamically changing locations that you set. That's just dope. It also keeps momentum between teleports, which means you can do stuff like this. Oh, nope. Alright, you guys are about to watch the biggest brain play ever. Hello. <laughs> Come here. No! Oh my god, dude, that guy definitely shit himself. If you come across one of these light nodes yourself, just make sure you don't get too close. Wait, can I- wait, can I touch this? Oh, I guess not. Next up is the Threat Seeker. Not to be confused with the Threat Detector. Now, even though the names may be similar, 343 decided to pull out all of their creativity with this one. See, the Threat Detector is a piece of equipment that can scan enemies with a pulse. The Threat Seeker is a piece of equipment that can scan enemies with a pulse. But it can Bounce. They have two decades of Halo sandbox to pull from, and they decide to make a near identical piece of equipment to the one the game launched with 20 months ago. I don't know who was in charge of making these decisions, but I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. You're a boring individual. I'm assuming you think pepper is too spicy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm honestly getting pretty tired of one-sided equipment. What just happened? <laughs> Please bring back more throwables. What a name. What a fucking yeah. name. You gotta feel- you feel we're so, so- Bubble shield. Grav lift. Trip mine. 
These are all so much more dynamic and fun because they are gameplay mechanics that the entire lobby can interact with, not one-sided power-ups. I'm not saying the other equipment is bad because the repulsor and grapple hook are still 10 out of 10 additions. I'll hit that Uno. Oh, we just hit that Uno reverse card. Bro, I, I just ammo for this. outplayed Bro, these clowns with the repulsor. I just kept them throwing back card. all the grenades, just doing damage to them. Hit that Uno reverse card. Hit that Uno reverse. <laughs> I reflected his grenade. Hit that Uno reverse. <laughs> oh my. I think I these could have, all coexist though. So please, more physics based neutral equipment. Let's talk maps. There are two new ones Scar, a banished BTB map. The lava aesthetic is so freaking sick, and I just love looking at it. It plays alright, although I will say it just feels very crowded. Literally the only space for the vehicles to move in this big team battle map are these very tiny lanes. This is a problem with pretty much all of 343's BTB maps, but we'll talk about that more later. And Forest, an immediate instant Halo classic. This has probably been said to death, but it gives me massive Delta Halo vibes. Every single DLC map for this game has been a step in the right direction. It's visually unique, gorgeous, has interesting play spaces. Also, it's very fun to grapple around in. Dude, the grapple hook is so good on this map. The trees and everything are just so nice in the ruins. Oh, nice. <laughs> in my opinion, this is up there with some of the greats. They also added Solitude, which is a Forge remake of a Halo 5 map. It's definitely a map in a FPS game. Anyways, now with the whole infection takeover thing, you might be wondering what happened from the last season cutscene. When your Spartan and Din discovered Eratus in Oni's basement. That dirty freeloader. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the season 4 story. You're telling me we get nothing? Hell, I'd even take some shitty Redfall-style cutscenes where it's just some 2D drawings with some narration. Something, man. I am in awe that 3 for 3 is so lacking in resources that they had to cut the multiplayer story. Look, whether you think it's a waste of time or not, doesn't matter. This is Halo. They should fucking have infinite resources to do whatever they want. I know it's a meme that haha small indie company 343, but it's not a joke anymore. This is real. And that's about it. They did bring back the one life modes, which is cool. I love game modes that force you to play more safe and tactically. <laughs> and there you go. There is all the new content. Well, Kelsky, what about the brand new Battle Pass? I'm fucking sick of Battle Passes. Time for my favorite parts of these videos. Customization and monetization. So, they introduced the brand new Hazmat Core. I'm not sure why armor that can literally float through space needs to be wrapped in rubber, but this is also the same company that brought us cloaks, so I'm not surprised. Does it make any sense? No. Does it look cool? It kinda does, I can't even lie. The Mark VI one in particular looks pretty sexy, all wrapped up like that. I thought this one was cool at first, and then I turned it to the side. With this new core, it now brings us to eight armor cores. Fucking eight and not a single cross-core helmet in sight. I said in my last video that I doubt cross-core armor will ever be a thing, and now I'm doubling down on that. It's just not happening, all right? Cross-core armor isn't real. Santa Claus isn't real. Someone has to tell you the truth, all right? Also, you're adopted. The only cross-core content we've gotten is that 343 says, starting in season four, all codings now and in the future will be cross-core. Fantastic. Looks like we're getting somewhere. Only, uh-oh, it looks like they're all still individual codings. And these are used to bloat out the battle pass. Let's do some quick math, class. There are now eight cores. One cross-core coding really just means eight individual codings. Two of these cross-core codings are in the battle pass. That means 16 slots of the 100 tier battle pass is two color patterns. Three, four, three, what the hell? There's really nothing new to say about coatings. They are still fucking stupid. Look, even the dead bodies in Forge have primary and secondary color customization. Speaking of the battle pass, if you're a free player in this game, you're playing for 10 pieces of armor. 
Yes, I counted. Two of those pieces are helmets. You know, the most defining piece of armor. One at tier 27, and the other... When you complete the entire battle pass. If you're a free player in this game, here's what 3 for 3 got for you. I can't even imagine being a brand new player. You're going through customization, looking at all this cool armor, and then realizing it's just straight up inaccessible. Well, we do have that brand new progression system now. Maybe that will have some cool rewards. I mean, we've only been waiting 20 months for it. Wait, what's that? You get a banner icon? Oh, wait, 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 wait. You also get emblems too? Oh, okay, see, now that's worth it. The progression system is so extremely shallow. It's essentially just a fancy way to publicly display how much time you've put into this game. Here's an idea for you, 3 for 3 You know all of those weekly ultimate rewards? Exclusive content you can't get any other way except by completing all of the weekly challenges? Why, for the love of Sergeant Johnson, did you not include any of this content into the progression system? You have dozens of skins and armor pieces just locked away in some cell. I have nothing new to say about the store. It also still sucks booty hole. I will at least mention that the new model weapon customization stuff is extremely cool, and I would love to see more of it. Preferably, more of it not in the store. So with all the season four talk out of the way, I wanna talk about the shit that really matters. Squad battle. That's this guy right in there shooting at me. Get him, get him. <laughs> oh, he's so fucked. <laughs> Motherfuckers! Wait, you can open the side door right there? <laughs> Yo, we can still make this work. Yo, there's our whole team there. We can still make yeah. this work. Pick it up, pick it up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know what just happened to me. I see it. This uh, mode is without a doubt the oh most God. fun I've had on Halo Infinite matchmaking since, I think, ever. Is that a coil? This man just threw a coil at me! In the few hours I played, I had more Halo moments than in the entire 20 month run of Halo Infinite. Alright, fuck it, I'm going for it. Alright, I got me. it. Discover me. Run, baby boy! I'm going. Oh, they on me, they on me. I got you, I got you, I got you, go. Bro, these bullets are just whizzing past me. She's real, bro, they got a chopper, you gotta move. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Alright, I distracted him. You got it, this is easy. Okay. No, I, I fucking got in the vehicle. I got it. Go. I got the cap. Let's go! I think I finally figured out why this game can burn out people so easily. Why, despite the extremely solid gameplay, it gets old fast. The explanation comes down to one word. Maps. This playlist has only made me realize that 343 just cannot make fun maps to save their life. You know in single player games when you walk into an area and just with a glance, you know it's an arena. You think, oh yeah, a fight is definitely about to happen here. That is 343's problem. All of their maps, despite looking different, all feel like arenas. They don't feel like places that exist in this Halo sci-fi vast universe. 343 has never made a construct, a boarding action, a Zanzibar, a sword base, don't get me wrong, it's okay to have arena maps that are fine-tuned, competitive, symmetrical, all that. But the problem is that is like 95% of 343's maps. It is okay to just have fun, interesting play spaces. Not everything needs to be competitive and highly fine-tuned. This playlist made me realize that Halo Infinite gameplay is fucking fantastic. It's just that most of the maps are boring. 343. You see this area right here? This is called space. It's area that vehicles can freely drive around in. Pretty much all of 343's BTB maps, including the new one, are literally all roads. It fucking sucks trying to have vehicle combat when you have like two roads to choose from, and there's tons of Spartans on the sides of those roads with tons of cover. Overall. I enjoy Season 4. I am very happy we are now on a 4 month cycle. Would prefer 3, but hey, baby steps. The recent MCC update just added a ton of extremely cool modded content, 
including Halo 2 Griffball Bro, what? The painfully long hiring freeze is finally over, so 3 for 3 is hiring employees again. Season 5 is looking to bring Firefight and Forgeable AI, meaning we can literally make our own Firefight and co-op missions. There will always be Halo hype. This image alone generated so much buzz, mainly because people thought it was a Halo Battle Royale. It's not a fucking Battle Royale! But the point is, people still want Halo. It just seems like they don't want Halo Infinite, which is a shame. But I also totally get it. There is a lot of really cool Halo goodness on the horizon, and I never thought I'd say this, but I'm feeling hopeful. If you don't, that's fine. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm making this video for me, I, as a lifelong Halo fan. So, what is my final verdict for Halo Infinite Season 4? Still no Spartan ass. 1 out of 10. Also, go play Battlebit. <laughs>